Oh, I always love is people who say like, oh, you know, you 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 look like you must be a stoner. You know, I listen. I smoke weed. It's fucking awesome. It allows for that cartoon world to be something you want to see. If I mean, no, it does. This doesn't see it. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that. I don't know what is. You know, drawing on coffee has its effect. Drawing on alcohol has its effect. Drawing on weed has its effect. I tried to do some drawings on um, ecstasy one time, but that that just didn't really make any. It just didn't really work out so well. I played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons when I was in high school, which was fucking sick, by the way. Good for good for imagination and storytelling, brain development. But there was this magic power that you could get. Basically, it was empathy for objects. You could like touch this, boom, and you would just know the history of that thing. Like it was like a, you could just feel it. You could see its birth and its, you know, where the hands it exchanged. And I really loved that power. That's what objects are for. I'm Mike Perry. I make a variety of things, drawings and paintings. This sculpture here, I made this thing. I'm really interested in ladders. Sometimes the ladders will be in like a sculptural form or possibly like a pattern. Um, sometimes they're animated, but that's kind of not something I've done. Maybe I'll do it now. For the last two months, I've been building a body of work for a show of paintings. I've just been on this pretty serious journey of like, what does the human form look like? And what is my version of the human form look like? Trying to think about what light would look like if it was an actual flowing lit goo. I'm from Kansas and my exposure to the art world was fairly limited. My grandfather gave me a really dirty tackle box full of oil paints when I was like 14 or something. And I remember painting things and just being like fucking floored. I'd just be like, oh my, I made this. By the time I was in high school, I was like, fuck it. I was covered in paint all the time. Went to art school and I was bored by the painting program. I just was not interested in painting still lifes and the model and landscape. All the stuff that I'm currently painting and interested in, which I find highly ironic. I think a lot of the shapes that I use are ambiguously sexual. And I think that that provides a level of freedom because you can hide the sexuality. I love making faces out of boobs. I just think that's like fun and hilarious because at the end of the day, like, I mean, googly eyes are just boobs, right? Like it's, it's, they've been that way since day one. I do like drawing people having sex. I think that's really funny. Um, like flexible, bendy things. Um, this is Jay over there. Yo. Jay and I have been working together for five years now. I always see his work as extremely playful, and that's what I really appreciate about it. And he is constantly working, which pushes me. My wife and I have like obsessively watched Next Gen Star Trek Next Generation like way too much. I'm John Luke Picard, Jay's mm -hmm. Will Riker. <laughs> the space becomes the Enterprise. We're like on the journey, traveling through the world. These are just filled with just stuff. It's like, here's Broad City screen prints. They hired me to do a single identity that would be in every episode. And I just got super lucky that they liked all of the ideas and were like, we should just do all of them. The thing about Broad City that's been so exciting is that it's just introduced animation to me. It's just incredible. The medium of television and animation was felt so foreign. And all of a sudden, I'm like, here I am. This is, the, this is Island Life, so this is the, the show that Jim and I have been working on. Island Life is a collaboration between myself and Jim Stoughton. Um, and it's just this, this place, this island universe where anything can happen. Hello. Hello, James. Hi, Mike. Hi. Island Life is a concept for an animated TV series that Mike and I came up with. We are the main characters in it, in a very psychedelic and abstract world. All right, Jim. Right, bye. Bye. You know, the Island Life thing is exciting because it stays away from the kid world. 
something that's given permission to fully embrace the universe of cartoons and childhood, but in an adult context. <laughs> we can do whatever we want. Like, if we want to go to outer space, we just go to outer space. Like, we don't have to have a different budget, hire a different crew for that. You just draw space. You're like, okay, what happens when it rains sideways? It rains sideways and your physicality is soft enough that you wiggle. One of the adjectives that I'm really excited about is this word wiggly. Like, I think it's really um, a weird word. And maybe, like, if you look at it and it feels a little weird and you feel a little wiggly, that's the goal. My father was schizophrenic and, like, there was a lot of mental illness in my family. And so, you know, I definitely always was very conscious and saw the fantasy world versus the real world. It's the whole journey, right? It's like, where does the cartoon begin and where does the reality end? I, I mean, honestly, I'm just beyond stoked. This feels so positive and so optimistic, and, you know, that's, that's what I was going for, so. I think the hardest part about being an artist is just the reality of the solitude. It's just this solo journey that you're on to get all of this stuff out of you that feels somehow important to get out, you know? Thank you.